Good morning. Happy Friday. Is it Friday? Yep, it's Friday. I don't know what day it is. I work for myself. I don't fucking know. The only time I know what day it is is um because I've got school pickup on Friday and oh yeah, it's Friday today. <laughs> How are you? So it's only taken a few years <laughs> to really fully observe and digest all of these at all of this culture war shit. And we're coming almost to a pretty I mean, I wouldn't say it's an Occam's razor solution, right? Because it's incredibly complex. There's a lot of moving parts to this. But we I think I've diagnosed where this has happened. And it's not the scholarship. I don't think it's the scholarship. I don't think it's ideology. I don't think it's politics. I think it's a number of different factors that only somebody who's worked 25 years in digital can see. And you're looking at her. So, again, like, I think that that's the thing about the culture wars, right, is that there's always someone who's got their own angle. So a historian will see it from a historical perspective, an anthropologist will see it from that perspective, um, you know, an epistemologist will see it from, like, that point of view. A mathematician will just punch them. <laughs> uh, shade. Um, you know, and idiots are going to idiot, right? Well, there's a lot of fucking – and Americans are being dumb. Okay, that's the glaring fucking thing that's come out of all of this work. Now, I know that's not something that would be argued in a paper, but the retarded states of America is largely to blame for this. Okay, now, so this video is very quickly. I'm going to make it very clear what I define as wokeism, and I'm allowed to define it the way I want to define it because this is my work. This is my definition of wokeism, okay? I believe that it's not as separate from an ideology. It is a phenomenon that is quite specific to the current time that is um, online. It has come out of fandoms largely. It is a consequence of a number of different factors, right? There's a combination of things. It's a perfect storm. But wokeism, I, I define wokeism as that perfect storm, as a phenomena, not as a, an ideology. Right? I actually have been trying to dig on it on this phenomenon, right? Or phenomena, right? Phenomena. Do, 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 do. Phenomena. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Yeah, that's why no one takes you seriously and gives you book, seal, book deals, Taya. That's why no one will give you a PhD, Taya. Because <laughs> you do fucking dumb shit like that. Anyway, <laughs> but I see this is how I, this is my definition of wokeism. And I think it's the correct one. Okay. Everyone thinks that their, their discipline has it right. Everyone thinks they're correct. The difference between me and other people is that I don't have one discipline. I cross a few of them and I've also deep dived into this to try and diagnose before I tried to fight. Again, being a policy person, the first thing that you do is identify the problem before you can accurately address it with a solution. And I think I've diagnosed it. So wokeism is distinct, right? You may hear fucking culture warriors talking about the far left or, um, you know, communists, fucking cultural, let's just laugh, cultural Marxism, <laughs> dickheads, okay? Now, what wokeism has that's sort of unique, right? And I'm calling it wokeism just because I think that it's, it's, I think it's a good name. I think it's actually a good name. I don't mean it pejoratively. I mean it quite literally. I think it's quite a, it's a good name. Once, hear me out. So I think it is a phenomenon, right, that has come, like I've said, it's largely online, right? It's not an ideology. It has come out of super online. So this, 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 it's, a, it's sort of an unintended consequence of everyone not really thinking about social media it's super online, right? And it has offline consequences, which I'll explain, right? Not in the way you'd think. It's come out of fandoms. There's an, uh, it's come out of the history of the uh, online culture wars, right? Yesterday I referred roughly to two um, tribes there. It's a lot more complex than this. I'd like to be able to, I need to be able to flesh this out in writing, but video is my only real outlet at the moment because I'm not 
really funded and, you know, all, all those things, right? I'm busy, but I'm trying to get it done and I'm trying to get it out there so that fucking maybe someone might listen to me. You, you're listening to me. <laughs> Share it, okay? Correct people when they're wrong and say, no, you're wrong. This is what Taya says. I think we're ready for that. I think I'm right. So it's come out of the fandoms, but it's, it, it's more of a consequence of the way that digital tribes have been built. Right, it's part of that. It's a phenomenon. It's that 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 portion of sort of that it's created some sort of religious thinking. So I wouldn't say that it's a religion, right, as such, but it has religious thinking. That's again something that others agree with me on. I believe that this has mostly had rocket fuel fueled on it by marketing. I think it's a phenomenon of marketing, right? I think that it's just a perfect storm. Of a number of things. Now I'm going to walk through some of this stuff. What I, you know how I was referring? I've been referring to this being a um, sort of a palate cleanser, right? Uh, uh, not a palate cleanser. Fucking sorry, a thing came up on my email. I read the wrong words. Don't you hate it when that happens? Um, a, a magic eye painting, right? I, 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 and it's largely because that's part of the illusion. It's part of what's happened, right? And that's because. The missing link here, right, is the missing link here is uh, this the big tobacco, the history of massive United States corporations and the way that they've conducted themselves in the past. The tobacco lobby I've talked about before, right, are, are famously quoted as saying, we are in the doubt business, okay? What they did, and we've, I've, I've talked about this before, right, is that they basically are in the business of making sure that people aren't sure about things. And in those gaps, you can sell them shit, okay? That's how they, they you know, when, when it became clear that smoking caused cancer, um, Big Tobacco did this sort of stuff, right? Funding research, uh, discrediting uh, critics, all of this sort of tact, destroying critics, all of that sort of behaviour. Big Oil have done the same thing, right? Around climate change, mining companies do it, right? Big Pharma are doing it now, okay? It's a perfect storm. So this is where the, there's, there's a lot of history here, but I'm just going to, I'll work through it very quickly. So wokeism, is not critical theory, okay? And critical theory is not postmodernism. I am going to define from this point forward wokeism as its own distinct phenomenon that is largely a result of uh, this perfect storm that we're talking about, okay? Yes, the scholarship is part of it, right? But not in the way I think, I think it's not – quite correct in the way that it's been um <laughs> let's just say that they, they, the way that it's been spun as some great conspiracy from the frankfurt school to to get communism into the united states that's red scare bullshit okay it's bullshit all right and like again okay so for those that are new postmodernism is really, it's not even really clearly defined. It's not even well defined. But really the only real definition of postmodernism is that it is um, critical or rubs up against and critiques, critiques modernism, right? So those things that we talk about true. So in the culture wars, you might see that, that, that rift, right, between sort of sciences and logic and, you know, Platoism and all those sorts of things, right, all, all of the old political philosophy. That's the definition of postmodernism. Now, let's just turn around and throw, throw out a whole – it's basically like anyone who's critical of how things used to be done. <laughs> I would actually argue that if you are a modernist, you're inherently conservative because, again, it's not – anyway, it's a side, side point. There's a lot of bad faith, right, criticism from the right. Now, one thing that I think is missing is uh, for a lot of people is the history around the way that the right – deal with the left and the disinformation campaign that they like to run. 
which is this Red Scare stuff. Now, the United States are allergic to communism. <laughs> we know this. They also don't know what it means. They don't know what any of this shit means. Okay. Now, I've talked about this before, and it's not insignificant, right, which is that in the 80s, right, it was, it was seen in front – it was seen – postmodernism was seen as a very convenient way, right, and I'm not talking about postmodernism. I'm talking about – I'm actually – we'll go into more detail with this, but this, I'm talking about deconstructionism specifically was seen to have form that to like pour rocket fuel on crazy. <laughs> but even for other postmodernists think that deconstructionists are fucking batshit. Right. But if you try like tracking the scholarship, yes, there is a, um, there's a path there. Okay. But they're still largely fringe. It's not a conspiracy. What it's done, what I think has happened, this is my hypothesis, which is that this good old military industrial complex has seen that deconstructionism is a very convenient way to legitimize the doubt business. Right? When everything when you make so deconstructivist, but basically there's the again there's this, there's this whole school of thought right of postmodernism which is actually great and this was part of my this is why I was sitting there and I'm going this doesn't feel right to me this this criticism that they're, they're, like even James Lindsay's criticism it doesn't feel right the grievance studies it felt like it was bad faith and that's because it is and it's wrong <laughs> it's wrong okay because it's, it's this deconstruction stuff, right, is still niche within, within postmodernism. It's still a small batshit part of people who think everything is a social construct, right? Not all postmodernists think everything is a social construct, right? And that's, I think that's worth, worth talking about, right? Also, there's, it, within the postmodern uh, history, like within postmodernism, right? Most people believe that you should absolutely not learn postmodern theory in philosophy till you've learnt modern the modernism, because this is where crazy happens. Okay, because this is the thing where it's like, no, you need like, the the vast majority of of philosophy departments think that in order to learn that. Right, you need to learn like that reality exists first, and then build upon the idea that everything is a social construct. Now, deconstructionism or deconstructivist, right? Derrida is it? He that's largely come out of literature, cinema, media, literature, those sorts of things. Reading media, okay, symbols, semiotics, those sorts of things, right? Which leads me to, the, to ask the question, is it actually Judith Butler's fault that doctors are listening to literature professors? I've said this before. I don't think it is. I don't think it's Judith Butler's fault. What I think has happened is that much like pharma, like giving doctors, you know, you know, kickbacks, right? Again, let's work back from what we know to be true, right? which is how big pharma like buying off doctors. Okay, we know this to be true. <laughs> all those medical conferences and fucking cars and love bombs and fucking all that shit. Okay, that's a thing that is anchored in reality and documented. You take a thing like deconstructivism, right? Where everything is a social construct. You then create a whole bunch of studies that say that, and you're in the doubt business. Clownfish! <laughs> <laughs> fucking clownfish! Sex is a spectrum. Oh, there's fucking some indication for this thing and some indication for this thing. All you need to do is, because I honestly think that this is an, an ad adaptive tactic where the big tobacco, they, it's new and improved. It's new and improved, which is that they went, well, if we went into science and started feeding scientific papers, 
right, that actually ref you, we, we couldn't work within that process. How would you infiltrate science to cast doubt, right? Because obviously with something like gender, you can't prove it. There's, there's some indication, but there's very, very little, okay, that it's anything but a philosophy, right, or that everything is a social construct, right? What do you do? You fucking encourage a whole bunch of fucking papers, all right, that so doubt, that make doctors just plant that seed of doubt, okay, that go, oh, shit, this is a new thing that feels is very intense and very real, right, um, and I don't know because doctors are very busy people. I don't know. This is emerging. That's all you need is the doubt business. Fucking it's obvious, plain as day. Now, how you get the kids in, I think this is largely a sort of 40-year, I agree with them that it's a 40-year thing, right? But I think that where it's come from is, is where the diagnosis is, is missed, which is it's, I think it's actually independent of the scholarship, right? Deconstruct is going to deconstruct. <laughs> Butler's going to butt, <laughs> right? But what they've done, what I think has happened here, is that we can't ignore the United States culture. We can't ignore United States parenting styles. We can't ignore, um, you know, every, again, all of the things that we know to be true, okay? Big money, healthcare, United States. University, college, big money, right? Parenting, right? Helicopter parenting, fucking everyone gets a trophy parenting, you know, all these sorts of things, right? It's largely cultural in the United States. Now, let's say something like the internet hits. Excuse me. I think that what's happened is that it's come out of fandoms, right? I, I think the missing link here is fandoms. Now, what's a fandom? Fandoms are these uh, communities where uh, children, largely young children and like pedos hang out, where they sort of gather around a certain thing, a celebrity, a book, um, um, uh, you, you know, a writer, uh, the, the Potter, you know, the Marvel Universe is probably the most prominent one, or Star Wars, Star Trek. Right, and I see. I was thinking about this. So you know how Star Wars and Star Trek used to get into full-on fucking religious wars in the early days of the internet. I was thinking about that, and then, but as a subset of the fandoms, you've also. So this is like true fans principle stuff. Mum, again, this is linked to marketing. This is, I said this. This is how you build an online cult, right? Good marketers build cults. Like that's that's just, that's just, that's just how it is, right? But what's happened is that it's actually more the, the capital, the evil forces on top of this that are, that are fueling a lot of this wokeism, right? It's a phenomenon. And wokeism is also parallel. It runs parallel to the uh, mega 4chan alt-right cult, right? But I'm just focused on wokeism, but they roughly apply. Now, they're, rough, they're different, different things, but they, they roughly apply to each other. Now, so it is kind of like false idols. Actually, a band report cards asked if it's false idols. It is a bit like that. Uh, but having built like online communities for years and years and years, you, you're effectively building cults. Now, good good cult leaders, you know, create fanatics, right? Now, a subset of uh, fandoms is fan fiction and deconstruction. A big part of what fan communities do is sit and deconstruct, right, the work. Of, of like the Marvel Universe or, or Potter or all of these things. It's, it's fascinating to me that the Potter, that the, the J.K. Rowling brushed so much up against this. It's so fascinating to see what happens when the, the god is fallen. It's almost like you could actually put some nice, like really fascinating Lucifer narrative around fallen angel stuff. It's fucking interesting. That's a whole other thing. Fucking side point. But... It's fan, like, so with fandoms, you've also got these large portions of people who basically dedicate a lot of their time to fan fiction, right? 
deconstruction and um, um, you know like just 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 worship right of that that thing debate discussion right they form a tribe they form tribes around ideas they form philosophies and groups and um, you know there's the people who fucking you know all this stuff right like a microcosm for what should be it's like a microcosmic philosophy department without the foundations so that criticism of like uh, deconstructionism and postmodernism the idea that you need those foundations before you go into you know the deconstruction stuff right what i think has happened here is that these fandoms have explored deconstruction right without the foundation and because the fandom so what you've got is a whole bunch of kids right going on the first like think about how, why what happened when if you were on the uh, internet in the 90s the first thing that you did was go into fandoms right i first thing i did i my whole career is based on like me being in a fandom right and then eventually working with that artist most of us went and we were in web rings and fandoms and we did in my case it was guitar tabs in others it's you know writing and all that sort of stuff at some point these things sort of went off the rails because i think that corporations saw an opportunity to market to them now this is where i think the dark forces come in which is where kids are, are, are largely attracted to fandoms right like you know you like a thing you want to talk about it all day that's adolescence adolescents are intense when it comes to fans being fans right like we're all batshit i was a batshit fucking mariah carey fan so i'm still a batshit ben folds fan but we don't talk about that just saying that there's a religious component to being a fan that fan relationship i think is at at, at at the, the core of this now wokeism seems to be well not not seems to be is i'm saying it i'm backing myself wokeism is this it is part psychological phenomenon right based on fans and fan theory so everyone has built cults right it's part political right and also in terms of like th there's a history around you know um, international relations and u.s interests and you know squashing left-wing dissent and all of those things there's lots of forces at play here right but i think that the digital component is the missing link i think it's a digital digital religion it's a digital cult and it's a digital uh, it, but it's not postmodernism. it's not necessarily even critical theory i believe that it is fandoms and culture cultural and tribes doing deconstruction without the, that, that philosophical, without foundation. Deconstruction for kids. Now, the market forces that happen here. First of all, we're in a, in a, a, the internet is a business where it's very hard to make money without selling advertising, right? It's very hard to make money unless you have a large following. It's very hard to make money unless you are, um, you know, the, the, it, it, okay, so we created some sort of, uh, let's just say we, with viral marketing and this, this going viral, I think we need to, again, I think uh, Tristan Harris has talked a little bit about this, but the incentive, the putting the incentives in place for people to try to get into the fame lottery, right? So I think this is a perfect storm of influencer marketing viral marketing the business model where it's impossible to make any money unless you've got like unless you go viral or you've got a large audience right plus sort of fandoms deconstruction happening right but now so what's happened so in this last 10 years and then america but they're fucking bullshit retarded states of america <laughs> So anyway, I wandered off on a fucking tangent. But so what you've got is a perfect storm of the internet, fandoms. There's a religious component to being a fan, 
right? Spirit, like psychologically speaking, it's the same thing. It's kind of like when you go to a concert, that's why you feel like you, you, you know, of someone you really love. It's almost like it is very similar to a religious experience. You've got super online, unsupervised kids, right? With parents. I did this evangelizing tech too early, right? Saying, go, thinking, just explore the world, have ideas, blah, 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 right? Deconstructionism within fandoms becoming the norm without anyone having any real like foundational basis or maturity, right? That's known in postmodern, like that's known in philosophy departments. But what happens, right? So these kids are sitting around talking about how everything is a social construct, um, you know, Marvel Universe, Marvel MCU, fucking all this stuff, things that should be, writing fan fiction, seeing People like E.L., what's her name? Fucking Fifty Shades Lady, right? Seeing her become rich, right? Seeing J.K. Rowling's, um, you know, hero's journey, right? And a part of them thinking, oh, well, if I do this kind of thing, if I write like this and explore things and create these build worlds, right, that I too might end up famous. I might end up, you know, doing this thing. There might be, there's like a lottery there. So they'd start writing shit and competing for shit. <laughs> Kids, again, they don't know what, they, they, they're using tools that they're not ready to use, right? Now, we've been, the internet is now, what, 25 years old, a bit older than that? Right, the World Wide Web, I mean. That means... There's a whole generation of teenagers that grew up with fandoms, not knowing that things are not a social construct. <laughs> okay. Now, this is where universities come in. This is where privatization of universities come in. This is where full fee paying university comes in. As soon as you shift universities from foundational like like this stuff, foundational, like modernism, uh, foundational theory, right? What they've done is they've gone from going to a university, studying the classics, studying the basics, studying science, and then building upon that with postmodernism and building on that with these things. Because, first of all, we've created a, a an economy and a culture where everyone needs an undergrad degree. Not everyone's smart enough to do university study. Like it's just, you know, dummies, right? You got a lot of rich, dumb American kids. And, you know, and this has happened, I extrapolate to the Western world, but it's, we are downwind from America. I think America is ground zero for this. The privatized university system where it's $100,000 to go and live that you know go and live on campus that rite of passage I'm going to go live on campus and the degree is almost secondary to the experience so what they do is they create gender studies critical theory but when if you've looked at a critical theory degree right there's no foundational stuff in it. There's no, no material stuff. It kicks off. And this is what postmodernists have like been debating. They say you shouldn't fucking have this. <laughs> it's a weapon. If you, you will, with young minds, you will create a whole bunch of kids that think that everything is a social construct. They need that basis in, that's what, you know, reading, writing, arithmetic. You need that foundation, okay? That's, that's development, if you look at attachment theory, right, in psychology or anything that's in psychology, right, you have to start with the, the, the basics. You feel secure before you, before you take risks. So one of the like, main tenets of attachment theory is that you make a child feel secure about the world around them and the people around them so that they can then feel free to explore the world. But if they don't feel secure, such as, Telling six-year-olds that girls can be boys, you're, you're, you're fucking them up. <laughs> you're fucking them up. Right? And this is where I think corporations, pharma, being in the doubt business, they see an opportunity. Right? A generation of kids with poor mental health 
who have, have no attachment to their parents. So you've undermined all of that attachment theory who now um, believe they can just, you know, have, a, have an operation and change sex without any, like, long-term, like, consequences, believing that everything is a fucking social construct and arguing about cl fucking clownfish when you've got a PhD. <laughs> but <laughs> fucking the clownfish winds me up. That is such a red herring, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. So Diane said my engineering degree lecturers called them no, not, naughty degrees. Yes, but the thing is, this is seem. Can you see how this is a perfect storm rather than a conspiracy? And I don't. And I, my, I mean, my main conclusion is that we're not going to be able to. You can't fight this with liberalism. You can't fight this with United States neoliberalism, James. Right? You can only fight it with Marx or with actual like material socialism. You can't fight it any other way. I can't see how the solution is anything other than a fucking Marxist or Chomskyist analysis of this. Put on, read fucking Chomsky. Chomsky's got it. Okay, I'm going to try. If someone would fucking, can someone please, if you've got a fucking thing, can someone please, like, supervise my fucking PhD or something so I can get this fucking written. <laughs> Okay, a building on Chomsky. Okay. They're in the doubt business. Unfortunately, the doubt business is completely destabilizing to children and society and development and their understanding of the world. Now, this is actually because, like I said, the internet's now 25 years old. So we've got now a cohort of kids who have grown up in the Marvel universe online and the Potter universe online. And they just deconstruction and deconstruction and problematizing and like all of this stuff, right? And this is where, and also on the flip side of that, you have 4chan and gaming and, you know, all that sort of, that, 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 add, that other kind of stuff, right? That's a, I'll talk about that separately. Well, we'll talk about that at some other time. But when you create an environment where it's $100,000 and you're selling an experience to a child, you're selling, a, you're not selling an education to them. You're selling them an experience, which is what American universities are doing, right? We all know that pop cult, that mythology with 80s movies around going to college. Like, that is just hard fucking, it's, it's imprinted on us, right, as a rite of passage. They're the customer. They become the customer. And what you do is because they've got degree, the demand for these degrees growth goes up, right? Because first of all, everyone needs to go to college, right? You need it because, the, you know, the, for some reason, you know, people don't see that as fucking dodgy. You need an undergrad degree to work at McDonald's, right? Um, a $100,000 degree that the parents are paying for, which means they're going to want their kid to get good grades and pass, right? Not actually be pushed, right? They're also a helicopter. So this is where coddling of the American mind sort of fits in, but it's not the full picture. The fandoms are the missing part, which is that they've been online deconstructing for 20 years and they have no foundation in the idea. They literally believe that everything is a social construct because that's what they've been told. <sighs> because big corporations are in the doubt business. They've been compromised. This is a big tobacco thing. They've gotten sneakier right now because they've been online with advertising now the business model with the internet with ppc and all that stuff the way that it is is that people are incentivized to say outrageous shit right and again what i'm saying here is not not unusual influencer marketing everyone wants to get famous right because they've been they've been seeing that shit for 20 years they think that that's you know, like that. Here's, here's, there were studies about like 10 years ago when they were saying that more and more kids were saying that they didn't want to be doctors or lawyers, they wanted to be YouTubers, right? YouTubers are their heroes, right? And again, religious thinking, similar to being a fan, it's the same sort of religious experience. You create a bunch of degrees that don't fucking, that basically just are, if you're in the doubt business, 
Isn't it a perfectly fucking perfect, perfect opportunity? Because what they need is research. They, they're in the doubt business. So what do they do? Whole departments dedicated to deconstructionism or de deconstructive shit, right? It has the double benefit. One benefit, right, is that you're just generating papers that support the shit that you're trying to peddle, right? The other side effect, and this is where the, the US, uh, you know, foreign policy and the CIA and fucking all this stuff comes in and war, all, all that sort of shit comes into play, which is also built in, rubs right up against all left-wing critique. So that's why all the material, that's all, uh, why all the Marxists and the fucking commies and that's why we're all fucking screaming at each other and thinking that they're fuckwits. And it's why they hate, it's by design, it's why they hate the feminists. It's, it's almost like, fem, it, it, this is, again, you, you pour jet fuel on a backlash, a feminist backlash, and you see that it's by design, right? Real postmodernists do take class. Real postmodernists do consider class and build upon that, right? Real postmodernists consider all of these things, but they're not in the intersectionality cult. It is distinct, okay? I see these things as just distinct, mostly because I know the theory and I, and I am fucking, I'd say I'm a postmodernist. <laughs> Right? I know the theory <laughs> and I know what the role of these things are, right? Wokeism is largely something that came out of sociology and media departments, right? Not politics, right? It has poured jet fuel on the doubt business. They're in the doubt business. This is Chomsky, <laughs> okay? <laughs> it's fucking, it's read your Chomsky. Okay. And what, like this, again, you can actually look at your left wing thought here. Marx, Chomsky, Gramsci, um, uh, uh, even your Derrida, <laughs> but even Foucault, they're not, it's, it's disingenuous. Okay. Even Butler, she's a lit professor. She's going to say stupid shit. But I'm going to point, I'm going to say this to you. Is it her fault that doctors are listening to her? <laughs> I would say no. Is it her fault that her idea, this is like Nietzsche in World War II, is it Nietzsche's fault that Hitler took his shit and like did what he did? No. And this is where I'm going to defend Judith Butler. Judith Butler's a lit professor. She's going to say stupid shit like everything's a social construct. But we don't listen to her because we fucking have other disciplines, right? And so this is the thing. I would say, well, intersectionality for me, I don't think that it's necessarily, I think it's moot. I think it's kind of like a, well, yeah, that's good feedback. And I think any feminist who isn't intersectional in their thinking um, is, 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 is they're, not, they're not doing it right. Like I, I, it's not that they're not, not the intersection. I'm saying if they're not... There's a difference between thinking and doing <laughs> and signaling and ranting, right? What we're doing right now is thinking, okay, and incorporating lots of different ideas. Intersectionality just means in, like empathy and consideration that there's, you know, there's more to this world than middle-class white feminism. I think that's a fucking valid feedback. It also only applies to America and it's also you build a cult. <laughs> also, it didn't apply to, to, to try to apply to men. <laughs> <laughs> it's gaslight yeah intersect it's silly it's silly but this is what i'm saying is that a large part of this is dumb people being dumb right is butler from america crenshaw american intersectionality america critical race theory america retarded states of america is i think we should listen to more european philosophy if you ask me right anyway <laughs> fucking dummies Holy shit, I was watching Dave Rubin. I just watched a thing. He apparently has a political science degree. And I was like, if that is the standard of a political science degree in the United States, they're like, I have no, I have no words, right? <laughs> no words at all. 
Because I sit there and I was like, I'm going to burn my degree if that's what he's got. He's not bright. Um, but I'm just saying, right, what I think this largely is, is it's just the digital, the, the digital angle is, crit, is like 70% of this whole fucking thing. This is why I think we need to decouple wokeism as its own unique. I'm going to, this is what I'm, well, no, we don't need to. I'm doing it. Wokeism is a phenomenon, a digital phenomenon, a digital cult that is largely fueled online from fandoms. It's got religious thinking and religious components to it, which has been exploited by corporations, right? Trying to apply Chomsky, right? So if you make a big tech, right, and big tech and media are largely the same thing, right? Uh, if you put that in, um, in as the fifth estate, uh, sorry, as the, the fifth pillar of the propaganda model, right? Um, and, um, you know, wokeism as the new sort of um, uh, the tool used, right, to, to, uh, to, to punish people who sort of criticise. the. See, this is why, can I say to you, this is why I know for sure that the Culture Wars bros won't listen to me, even though I know I'm right, because they're part of the problem. They're part of the industry. They all, they're all incentivized to make money out of this stuff, out of the outrage, right? Um, that's the thing. I don't, I don't think anyone's really incentivized to, to fix this stuff. I am because I, I actually just want to do this for the – I, I just wanted to know what the fuck's going on myself. I think I've figured it out. I've spent years and years and years and years. This is a very quick summary. I've spent years working on this. But what happens, you know, like you've got, like the relationship with postmodernism is tenuous, right? I think it really has just become because it's online fandoms and because deconstruction is part of an, like being a fan and, and, and that sort of stuff, right? That deconstruction aspect has been, had jet fuel poured on it by, by fandoms and the internet and advertisers and marketing, right? You have a model that incentivizes people to say, stupid shit and try to go viral and, and out, outdo each other, outthink each other, outright each other, out fucking TikTok each other, all those things. In that sort of, you know, fame lottery. Those kids grow up, that's how they grow up. And then they grow up, right? They need to go to college because they're told they have to. Their parents expect them to pass. So they go get a bullshit degree that doesn't challenge them or give them any foundational stuff. And when you try to teach them foundational stuff, Right, the fandoms have told them that that's all a fucking microaggression and shit. So they start to cancel you. So the the system starts to adapt around the customer because that's customer. Just again, if you ever wanted a concern, a, a fucking um, argument for free university education, right here and free education right here is what you need because it, once you put money into things and free healthcare, once because that what a lot of what that does is take away the disincent the, the incentives for corruption. Right. This is what I think when they say, oh, the state, it's like, well, no, what it, capital, this stuff is corruptible. And when you put money into it, when you put it, open these sorts of things up to the free market, especially children who are malleable, when you open them up to that, that's going to be exploited. Right. The government's there to make sure that capitalism behaves itself. <laughs> Right and yes, government can get too big and all those sorts of things. There's other problems, but that's a whataboutism. It's irrelevant. Okay, privatized education is a big part of the problem. Privatized health is a big part of the problem. Right, and those sorts of things. Now, those kids go to university, and they get a bullshit degree that just affirms their worldview. Right, if you're sitting on the fandoms, right, sitting on the fandoms of Marvel and fucking Potter and whatever fandom, right. And you're sitting there and you're talking about how everything's a social construct. You're interested in that stuff. You're drawn to it. You're drawn to the creative industries, right? So you end up sort of being drawn to a degree that's like cinema studies or those sorts of things. That's what you do, okay, because that's what they've been exposed to, right? It's only – and those kids that are sort of pressured to be doctors and lawyers and those sorts of things have less of a choice, but they still – they end up picking up those – Bullshit easy electives because it that makes their life easier, right? Those kids are now in the workforce. <laughs> okay? <laughs> of course. And they've, they have no – this is – do you know what this is? This is like a whole – this is a 15-year American Idol episode. <laughs> 
You know those kids where they nobody told them they couldn't sing? <laughs> And they fucking spend years being told by everyone that they're a great singer. And then they go. It's like, how do you get to the point of an audition where you be publicly humiliated and then you realise that you can't sing because nobody told you that you can't sing? I think this is what's happening is that it's been it's sort of we've raised all of our kids without telling them they suck and that they're dumb. And that the world, I honestly think that a lot of this is just around a, a, a perfect storm. Then you give us all slot machines that distract us from it all. And, you know, hiding in plain sight is a fucking evil corporation that fucking wants to exploit this stuff and sow doubt and disinformation. And you've got fucking, you know, state forces trying to fuck shit up. You've got troll farms fucking shit up. You've got... Um, Disinformation everywhere, warfare with COVID, like COVID vaccine, fucking, you know, everyone's in the doubt business. If anything, it, we're all in the doubt business now. I'm trying to be in the truth fucking fact business, but I think and identify that this this is what's happening. And they they wrap it up in disinformation, right? And they call it misinformation, disinformation, which are different things, right? But. We're in a position where because everything is so polarised that disinformation, everything I say is the truth and everything every, my enemy says is disinformation and you end up with these tribes. It's all marketing. It's all just corporate shit and warfare. So the combination of, warf, you know, like the international fucking security stuff, right, and um, warfare, politics, and like the religious na nature of fandoms, right, celebrity worship. So, so uh, freaky Retza said, we, we do our archaeology based on material Marxism. We don't know their thoughts, but evidence demonstrates behaviours. So what is left? How will archaeology look in the future? Will we see the rubbish of the world and reduction of manufacturing in developed countries, but increased, increase in consumed items? I think what we will see is... 20 to 30 year period of time where shit got crazy <laughs> and there'll be weird relics of it. Um, I think a lot of this stuff is a failed experiment. I think that we need to adapt to it. Um, I don't know whether we have sunk cost fallacies going on with the internet as it stands right now. I don't know whether it's even working or workable. Can we push through this? I don't know. But what I do know through history is that these forces are largely unsustainable so long as people diagnose it correctly. And that's part of my frustration, the culture wars people, whatever. And I feel like I've diagnosed this correctly. I really do. I think I've – now I know how to – this is US fucking imperialism – and fucking all the same shit. The more I actually, can I be honest with you, the more I read about it, the less afraid I am of it because I know what it is, all right? I've got to try and write this all down. It's just, it's very difficult. But one thing that, that, that history tells us, and I've said this before, there's two paths. We end up in a fucking, like the matrix, <laughs> in a pods, right, being harvested and consuming and fucking whatever, Hunger Games shit right? It's not implausible. I don't think it's going to happen, but it's not implausible. I think that what we need to just start doing is getting our heads right, our heads back. Stop arguing about clownfish on Twitter with dickheads and children, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking winds me up. Stop being distracted. Share my shit. Get me on things where I fucking expose this stuff because no one's listening to me. It's like no one, they, they, they just ignore, it's almost like people are just willfully ignoring the fact that this came out of fandoms and out of the Tumblr v4chan sort of, his, like that, that, that whole history. I'm going to really do a deep dive into that at some point because it's not insignificant, this warfare that's happened between tribes on the internet and it's largely uh, driven by corporate forces and largely driven by Americans, right? And it's just down, we're all downwind from, we just got to get our head back and fucking see who the real enemies are. Stop saying it's about China.
It's not China. China's doing fucking dumb. Let's, okay, let's just assume. Okay, I'm not dismissing stuff. But what I'm saying, let's assume that all countries are fucking with all the other countries to try and expand all of the time. Okay, that's known. But no one person or country or anything is doing it more than any other. Okay. That's called fucking, you know, that's just the, the fucking intelligence community being fuckwits. All right. But the US intelligence committee are being fucking like, this is shit that's actually known. And, you know, US fucking, you know, corporate bullshit. Tech companies, US corporate bullshit. It's a fucking military industrial complex. Just call it for what it is. It's a shame that, do you know what's annoying me? What's annoying me is that Chomsky and Greer and all those people, right, and again, this is why they're being sort of written off as cranks, but they're actually correct. This is a lot of the, a lot of this stuff. It's 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 right there. You just got to have someone point it out, and enough people hear it and go, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because people will like. I sit there and I go, yeah, my kid spent too much time in fandoms, and it fucking made her screwy in the head. Fuck. Oh yeah, she didn't have any foundational knowledge. She was like talking and deconstructing all day and then when presented with an actual politics class, she fell apart because she couldn't fucking handle it. That's what's happened. They, 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 they ran before they could crawl. And that's where it's just, right? Yeah, so this is fandom, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm lumping, I'm saying fandoms, um, just this is more just fandom culture, uh, but underneath that there's other, other things that, you know, like fan fiction right? This idea that you can just, um, like there's a whole, whole world of like standing. You've also then got fucking porn fandoms and fetish fandoms. And, um, I'm talking about fan psychology, not no particular fandom. So you've got, uh, I use fandom for some, as a, okay, let me define this. Let me define this. I know that it's defined by others, but when I talk about fandoms, I'll probably try to find a new different definition for it. But um, um, online communities with a um, that religious fan aspect to it, right? And there's an obsessive component to it. Uh, I would say fet life fits largely under that fandom, right? Um, but yeah, well, I'll, 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 I'm working on trying to define that a bit more clearly because I, I want to make sure. See, this is part of the problem: is that they're stealing all the fucking words. People are stealing the definitions. Like wokeism, I'm studying it with this thin slice, this phenomenon. Do, 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 do. Phenomenon. Do, 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 do. No, I can't help but do that. But it's 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 largely a digital phenomenon, a tribal conflict, right? And they're brushing up against each other. You've got corporate forces that are that benefit from it. You've got a business model that incentivizes it. Okay, now. And the end result is that these kids actually just don't know what's real. They don't have – we've sort of skipped a lot of this attachment theory stuff. And this is one of those things where attachment parenting is another fandom, right, where they've taken a good idea and built a fucking cult, right, which is where it's like, well, are you – it becomes rather than a, 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 a principle of development and something that you should know – to are you wearing your baby in a sling every day and is it a designer sling? And actually that's actually a really good example of uh, 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 something, a good idea that can just become commercial, right, which is a parenting style. So, you know, you've got attachment parenting, right? Most people are largely, you know, if you know attachment theory, you do that. You make them feel secure. The baby feels secure and um, there's ways to do that depending on depending on, you know, your, your parenting style. And that, that security allows that child to go out into the world. That's, that's, that's the thing. But then it becomes about the brand of sling you own or the, like, all of the shit that you own or the things you buy or um, how much you signal the virtues on parenting forums and you sit around talking more about attachment theory than actually fucking spending time with your kid. <laughs> you spend more time bullying those that don't have your parenting style than actually doing what you're supposed to do, which is, make your kid feel good and secure right and I think that as a generation we've let the kids down there which is that they needed they needed their th and this you know it's going to get mischaracterized see another factor in all of this is how it's this is something I think that well turfs 
right? Or anyone needs to be anyone who's doing good faith work in this area, because there's a lot of bad faith work in this area, a lot of fucking grifting, right? And a lot of bullshit and a lot of stupidity and bad takes, right? Anyone who's doing sort of good faith, deep research in this, a lot of the words that we're using are being used as pejoratives and are being misunderstood. Okay. Now that's why I didn't, re again, I, I think I've talked about this before, right? Um, um, where I was actually saying, guys, there's a cult here. This is how it meets a, the cult criteria, right? This is this, 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 and this. Then I saw that the amazing Polly was saying that. And I go, well, that fucking ruins my credibility, doesn't it? It looks like it's a Q fucking thing, right? It's like we've been these idiots with idiots with tools they shouldn't have. Right? I think maybe we need an internet license. I think maybe you should have maybe that's just what we need. To, before you get out in the world, you need to fucking have a basic education. Maybe that's something that we need to look at. I know that sounds terrible, but it seems like you can't advertise to children, right, without legal frameworks. And I know these fucking dumb culture wars fucks are going to talk about how that's authoritarianism, blah, blah, blah. But I'm saying, practically speaking, from a child development point of view, we need to really look at what we're doing, which is we're giving idiots. It's like, okay, okay, here we go. With a gun, most responsible gun owners, owners, sorry, would I would say should have a gun. Should all of America have access to guns? Fuck no. Because <laughs> they're fucking trigger happy fuckwits. <laughs> and stupid. Should ch children have guns? No. Right? This is, I'm starting to think that it's just, a lot of my diagnosis results in policies that people aren't going to fucking like. I hope that we can, but also there's an element of like, we just need to educate people on the forces at work here, right? I don't think that you can fight this. You can't fight this with the same old like liberal bullshit. It has to be fought with Marxist analysis, I think. So you, and Chomsky. I think like actually people going, okay, this is how the world works. Here's what is actually happening. Here's, here's the interests that are working to fuck with your head, Right. Here's what they do, is they make you doubt yourself. They make you doubt things that are generally true. And there's, here's all of these forces that work against you. Now, the problem is that this is now in schools because teachers, all, all of the teachers that are under 30 grew up in fandoms. They all grew up with this shit, right? They all grew up out of these internet communities where they were fucking deconstructing everything and doing fan fiction and writing gay porn from like their two fucking characters and, you know, talking about the 300. I, I, I think that it's one of those things is here to stay. I think it's going to get, it's, it's loopy. And I think that all we can do is treat it and try to just chip away at the at, at making or maybe I don't know what what's what do I do what do I do to get mainstream fucking attention on this thing right what do I you, see this is my thing do I write I'm trying to write a book that no one will read that I'm self-publishing <laughs> on a channel no one watches <laughs> well you guys do I, I'm, not, I'm not saying I don't it is like Scientology however it is very much like Scientology and I hope what I'm hoping is that it will eventually shrink so when I talk about, see, when I talk about cults, again, this was something that was taken and ruined. I gave it, I let him, I let him take it in good faith. And then he went like, he just went, sorry, but fucking hell, Lindsay, he lost it. And now he's taken it and now ruined it and made it tribal. But it does behave like a cult in the fact that the cult, the psychology is predictable. The behavior of a cult is, a, is predictable and they largely peak right, in terms of they take over, we realised that they, they sort of snuck in and caught us by surprise. Now, yes, the corporate forces here are another factor. There's a lot of money behind this, right? But gradually it shrinks and shrinks and shrinks, right? It slowly loses people. That said, there's still people now who sign up to Scientology. They, they, they Knowing 
everything we know, they still sign up to Scientology, okay? And they stay in it and they believe in it, right? It's one thing if you keep believing it, but if you join Scientology now, but they still do, there's still people that join it. They still sign people up, okay? I think we need to accept that that's going to happen and we also need to somewhat accept that people are going to be in our institutions who believe this shit because it's who they are. They've grown up with this. They've grown up deconstructing things and not they've got no real sense of what's real, what's secure, what is known, right? And I think and because they've been largely they've been online. Again, it's a whole other thing with gaming with boys and I'm not saying girls are on fandoms and boys are on games. I'm just I'm not equating that there's a fucking layers and layers and layers of complexity. I could write fucking books for days on this shit, right? I can barely even define wokeism in less than an hour. And this doesn't even scratch the surface, right? But I think that we're, I think I'm, I think I'm actually close to diagnosing this accurately and I don't think it is about critical theory as such. I think it is a generational thing where we've formed cults with kids. And I know that they're just going to see, oh, that's right. I was saying about the, the, the history of the way right-wing talking points and the way they critique the left. The thing about the bad faith criticism from the, the right, and this is why this, I think the court, this, this, this disinformation campaign is so clever and sophisticated, or I don't think that it's necessarily sentient or conscious. I think it's just how capitalism works and how the retarded states of America works, right? If you know anything about politics or international relations or any of this shit, I'm not telling you anything that you don't know, right? But I think, I can't remember. Oh, yeah. So the history of how, like, the, the, the right-wing conservative in the United States demonise anything left of centre right, right? You'll see it all. They call it communism, Marxism, fucking, you know, cultural... <laughs> Cultural Marxism, um, but they also like to do this whole red scare stuff. They, uh, but they also love to like. They, there's this thing called pink scare, right? Which is equating everything with homosexuality. So they, they love their slippery slopes, their slippery slope slope arguments, right? Everything like, okay, all of uh, Australia mutually deciding that we should lock down and it's okay for the government to sort of sanction those that don't do it, we're descending into a fucking communism and authoritarianism. Like, that's just Americans fucking done. It's that black and white thinking. They've got scrambled eggs for fucking brains, right? <laughs> fucking scrambled eggs for brains. They, they call left wing, right, anything left of centre right, a cult. This was why, this is my frustration, anything left of fucking complete right-wing libertarianism, they call that authoritarianism. And it's like, no, hang on. See, this, I think this is where some of the, mis I, I, I think I alluded to this yesterday, the misunderstanding where just because Americans are using certain <laughs> words doesn't mean they, they mean them the same way we do. Like, Knowing that Dave Rubin has a political science degree and I have a political science degree and that's the level of his understanding is shocking to me, okay, because he's saying stuff that if he was doing a, an actual degree in political science, he would know he's, he's not true and what the gender, like he said, the gender pay gap's not real. It's like, well, that's not what anyone said. That's never been the case. You have a degree? Like, what the fuck? Anyway, so, um, so now, I think we're defining it now. Well, oh, sorry, the right wing, right wing disinformation. But let's not also forget that there's a whole tribe. There's also incentives for people, economic ones particularly, to stay quiet. So as much as people are saying, oh, why aren't you speaking up about trans kids? And it's like, you know, why aren't you speaking up about um, uh, fucking censorship? Why aren't you speaking up? Hey, guys, why aren't you speaking up about the fact that I've diagnosed this thing and you just crickets? Why? Are you interested in solving the problem? Or are you just part of it? 
And that's my that's that's my my take with this culture war stuff is that there's a lot of people who are earning a lot of fucking cash doing this stuff. I earn like uh, those that are patrons. I appreciate it, but it's it's not it's, you know it's very nice. But it's <laughs> I can't, yeah I I don't I do this on top of twelve hour work days right and other duties. <laughs> Isn't it interesting? That as soon as you say something that doesn't go with the cultural Marxist narrative or puts the blame on US capitalism or US corporate interests or, um, you know, US foreign policy or American exceptionalism, that suddenly everyone's fucking assholes clench up and go quiet, right? I think there's a massive misdiagnosis of this problem. It's not postmodernism. It's not critical theory necessarily to blame it is generational and it is based it, 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 it the, the blame is squarely at the feet of u.s um culture u.s parenting fuck the united states <laughs> and their shit <laughs> we knew that would okay we all knew that america would fuck it up for everyone didn't we <laughs> and because our kids are all downwind from that and they're on those fandoms right and this is something that I've observed because I have a child that was in fandoms very young, younger than I think in retrospect she should have been. So I know this. I know. I, I see what it did to her head. And I'm not stripping her of her agency or saying anything about her. I'm just saying I observed it. I observed what it did to her and her thinking. Um, and I think, oh, and also the problem is, okay, the reason why I think a lot of this hasn't been diagnosed is because of that legacy of things like moral panic around gaming and the internet and digital and cyber safety and all those things. This is not me. I'm not saying moral panic. I'm saying this is hidden underneath that criticism, which is that anything that is a legitimate criticism, this is that what's, oh, that, that's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. This is what's clever about this whole thing, a phenomenon of wokeism or say, you know, or, or, of, of that. This whole phenomenon is that it hides in plain sight because any legitimate criticism that you would throw at it looks like, looks like um, a conspiracy theory to either side. So if you say, um, no, actually it's capitalism, right, One, that, that, that tribe denounces you and says, no, it's not, you're a fucking communist right? If you say, actually, I don't, I think there's some really sinister corporate imperatives going on here when it comes to gender and kids, I think that you need to look into those sinister motives. The left go, oh, that's just another moral panic. And the right said that about homophobia and all of that sort of stuff. So what's happened? This is a, this is my diagnosis, right? This is not anything, this is my official diagnosis, which is that legitimate criticism of a legitimate phenomenon has hidden in plain sight. It is extremely sophisticated, extremely complex, extremely clever, but once you see the magic eye painting, you can't unsee it. And that's what I'm trying to get to, is how now we get people to unsee this. Now, I can build on Chomsky, I can write an essay that no one reads, and... Um, yeah, so I don't know what to do. I'd really, I really think there should be a fucking PhD or a book. Um, I am writing my book, but my book is slightly different. Um, slightly different, but I might, maybe I just have to scrap it and start again. Again. The fucking fifth time. <laughs> oh, anyway, well, if you know any, actually, if you know, the best thing I think would be if people could actually have me as a guest with a wider audience, maybe. Maybe that's the thing. But I don't think they want me on. Because I think they're going to have to admit that they're wrong. And I think they're going to have to admit that I'm right and that I've correctly diagnosed this problem and that their tribal shit is a distraction. Stop talking about clownfish! No more clownfish! <laughs> they're in the doubt business! <laughs> no more clownfish! <laughs> and keratypes and fucking... Oh. <laughs> okay, it's clear what this is. If you've, got, if you've actually got a brain and you know your theory and you know where all of these things are, it's plain as day. It's a lot of work. It's taken me five years, right? That My board. But we're basically just, you know, we've got a whole bunch of, a whole generation of adults who 
have been fueled by the doubt business. Right? That's what I that that's that's my conclusion through fandoms and um you know, that sort of stuff. Uh, so Philip, I went deep into Harry Potter fan fiction. Uh what is it? Like HB Box brought my reading level up several years and mum was happy. And I can see how people would dive headfirst into that scene. Yeah. And it's even it's not even picking on any particular fandom. It's just by design. It really is by design. In this in with um my, again, a marketer, digital marketing. I advised on I mean, for those that don't know, right, if you this is your first video. I started in politics, but then uh, I was in child protection, but then and, and, and ran political, did political campaigns. But through political campaigns and being a, like on the internet, I was a fan on the internet from, from being a teenager. But I was old enough and had that enough foundation in theory to see the bullshit, right? I can see how five years later I might have bought it, right? I can see how 10 years later th I would have seen this stuff as fact like reading Jezebel and shit. I can see how it happened because, again, I, I'm just an internet veteran, an old person who remembers that when things had that basis in reality before the fandoms kicked in and people started to go a bit nuts, right? The timelines fit. But, and, and again, I'm, I'm not saying that my hammer and I'm only, I might only be seeing a nail because I've got a hammer, but I don't think that's the case. I think the fandoms are a big part of this. And one I moved out of politics into campaigning, but then I moved into entertainment because I was a fan, right? I was participating in a fandom. I was then uh, appointed to run some communities on behalf of celebrities, my favorite celebrity, right? I'm not naming who it is because obviously until this, you know, whatever, but it's in my book. And, um, you know, and I, I worked in entertainment and music and I was, so I would start building those tribes. Then I became someone who would really advise on how to build online tribes and the true fans principle and how to build a community and how to engage fans and how to run that. I would admin these things, right? I did that for years and years and years and years. And then I ran workshops on it, on how to do that, right? Then when social media hit, I started to advise on that with social media and digital strategy. And I sort of, you know, graduated up into user experience because you just, you, you know, you graduate out. But that's my, that's my basis is how is this stuff, the psychology of marketing and the psychology of digital I don't think there's many people who know more than me on this stuff, right? And how it can go wrong, especially because no one was fucking listening to me. And I think people just really had a blind spot. So uh, uh, this was a blind spot. It was a blind spot. I think when we were building these communities, we were dabbling with lizard brains and we were dabbling with young brains, right? And I think we sort of, rash as an industry, we rationalised this. We did, I think we understated the damage that would be done and the harm. I think some people knew what they were doing. I saw, I saw this about, I was warning about this. I was war, started really questioning this at two, around 2007. Yeah, but 2008, that was about as when I started to go, ah, something, okay, something a bit off here. You've got a response, and this is like the video for Monday, that thing about that you've got a responsibility to the audience that you build and the culture that you build. That's that's something that I'm going to talk about on Monday. I was going to talk about it today, but I, I thought, no, I need to define wokeism, put my fucking flag in the ground and say, this is what I'm saying it is, all right? I think I'm correct. I don't think it's related to the scholarship necessarily. I think it's just um, it borrowed from deconstructionism because it came out of the fandoms, which is literature, Cinema, media studies, right? Sociology. That's just that's how it's going to go is deconstruction. Right? So I don't think necessarily even Butler's to blame for this. I think Butler's doing what Butler does. I like I said, I think the people who are to blame are the fucking adults in charge. <laughs> but even then, some adults have been too online and, and started to be too much fandom. And also, actually, the, the other missing part here is the generational shift that the internet caused where, um, I mean, I'm 41 and I was one of those early adopters telling everyone that they needed to look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this, corporations that they needed to have strategy and risk and governance in place. I was yelling and they were ignoring it, head in the sand, head in the sand, head in the sand. They still just have like interns running their social media accounts. That's why I think you should go easy on this fucking 
when they virtue signal on Twitter with fucking pronouns and shit. It's just like that's going to that's going to happen, right? I think we need to focus our energy on different things, um, because with deconstruction, they're going that they actually literally believe the earth is flat, in the sense that they believe that everything is a social construct. Now, most postmodernists don't believe this, but this is because people have been given a fucking weapon. Before, you know, they've been given this thing before they can walk. Right? They can, they're running before they can walk. They don't understand the context of it, right? And they built a cult. They built cults around it. So that's what I think's happened. <laughs> Does anyone any feedback, positive or negative, on this this thing? I think. Do you think I've nailed this? I think I've nailed it. I think I've diagnosed this thing, right? And I think Douglas Murray has partially diagnosed i think he's 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 the closest right but i think because he's coming from the right he's got a blind spot when it comes to um the universities and the business model and and those sorts of things i think he's sort of not a critic criti he's not a he's he sees postmodernism as the enemy because he's a modernist right so he he def he's into defending that against the the, the crazy postmodernist people He's making a large generalization there. I think that's a blind spot for, for the right. I don't think you can fight this thing from the right. I think you have to fight it from the left. I honestly think that we can only fight it from the, from the left and actually try to reform the left properly and rebuild. Hmm? You can go back and watch the video. The diagnosis is, I've said it actually like four times, <laughs> wokeism is not an ideology, it's a phenomenon it's a digital cult that came from fandoms uh, based on like that's that religious thinking that comes with fans. It's an unintended consequence and it's just marketing, marketing companies and corporate corporate and also US, there's other aspects, US imperialism, um, US cultural hegemony. Go back and watch, you can, you can watch it from the beginning. I'm not going to recap. Um, so, um, but that's, that's roughly it. I also wrote it down. It's on Twitter. I, and I've got to write it as a book or a fucking essay. And I'm sure that the fucking political pro, the bros will have all these opinions. And I think they're wrong. I think call it, I think they're just wrong. I do. I don't think they've got it right. I don't think they understand. I think a lot of the problem is that people don't understand the internet and its intricacies and its, the, the, it, it, its own. You could easily be a fucking internet anthropologist in its own in your own right and never cover everything right um yeah and that's the thing it's, it's this this fanfic thinking but i think that it is actually just a part psycho it's a psychological it's social psychology phenomenon as well so there's like i don't i think we underestimate the damage i honestly think we've we underestimate the damage we've done to the kids with this stuff i don't think it's just about puberty blockers I think it's actually about the fact that they don't believe. I think they believe that everything is a social construct, like that's a fact. Um, yeah, but that's but the thing is that they also don't believe that. How do you overcome that? That's like an atheist saying, "Well, they believe in a man. They believe that we were created." And you can present evolution to Christians until you're fucking blue in the face. But I actually—that's why I said right. Um, no, I'm saying kids general. I'm saying they started in, as kids in fandoms and have grown up, right? Because I'm a little bit older and have the grounding in material and modernism, right? And, and real postmodernism, not fucking deconstructionism. I call bullshit. But I could, I could call bullshit on it, but I, don't, I think that this is largely where, where it's come from. And I think it's come from marketing. It's come from um, UX. And it's come from community like fandoms, right? I really, tru truly, truly believe that. In the um, um, and in the broader sense, you've got that other stuff around sort of America versus the rest of the world, um, and um, you know the rise of like tech and big, you know Tumblr v four chan. There's a little whole fucking bunch there. It's coming in my book if I can ever get it written. Um, but um, yeah. Fandom, so, okay, so fandoms were deconstruction. So when you're a fan of something, you talk about it in circles nonstop. And that becomes deconstructive, right? You end up being, they've, they've sort of, uh, so it's a relationship. So postmodernism has a sort of 
there's a crazy element of postmodernism, which is deconstructionism, right? Which is Derrida. If you, I think this is the philosopher, if I remember correctly, right? I've still got to dive into that. It's not my wheelhouse, but that's largely the sort of the pocket of crazies who they literally believe there's no such thing. Everything is a social construct, right? Now you put for, pour fuel on that in a fandom, right? Which is around the Marvel, let's say Marvel Universe, Potter Universe, those sorts of things. They're deconstructing. It's a it's a perfect fucking toolkit, right? That plus fan fiction and all that sort of stuff, where you know you, you're writing out your fantasy world, and they're the young brains, young brains. You shouldn't. Again, this is that this is one of those divides in post. It's like people. It's pretty much consensus within like circles that you shouldn't be doing deconstruction until you have the foundation. That's 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 the argument, right? Yeah, but it's like a bubble of people and the talk goes in circles. But it is also, yeah, it's deconstruction by, by, by design, right? So you love a thing so much, you just want to talk about it all of the time. You're going to deconstruct it, right? And uh, you're going to do every talk, everything about it and all those things. Anyone who's had a teenager where they just talk nonstop about fucking Doctor Who or anything, I started to see it early with Doctor Who and my kid um, and, and those sorts of things, right? And all of those religious wars that would happen in the early days. I've talked about, I'll, I'll brush, I'm, uh, there's so many examples. There's so much to talk about here. And unfortunately, I've got to go <laughs> and do some work before I go do school pickup. But I think that this is largely something that's just a 20 year inevitability. It's kind of a, it's just unintended consequences of something that um, we need to address which is that I don't, I think the horse is bolted on actually defeating the ideas. And I think that what we need to do is define this thing and get it defined as a religion and get it defined as a belief system rather than as fact. And I think that that's going to be the problem that we have here because we're up against big corporations. We're up against interests that are really big and really interested in making it, making us all confused so that we think that nothing is real and that's part of the problem is that the corporate interests that exist are highly invested in making it so that we don't know what is true and not true right and I you can't critique this without a critique of capitalism you just can't right you can't this is market failure this is the absolute excesses and the end stage of fucking the most abhorrent behaviors of capitalism and unfortunately the right don't want to hear it <laughs> and unfortunately when we try to go to so this is what happens you go to the you go to the left with a critique and they fucking hate you because you're using right-wing talking points right and you go to the go to the right and they think that you you're a fucking commie you can't win so nobody's going to help so we're going to have to create our own legitimate left-wing movement i think that's that's the answer we have to create our own Honestly, I think a journal of woke studies is not fucking out there. It's multidisciplinary. There's a million fucking things that could be done about this. We need to start just talking about this properly and not engaging in the wars. Again, you, you can't just diagnose. Tumblr is just a tool. Yeah, I use it as shorthand. So Tumblr versus 4chan to roughly sort of get people. This is to anchor people roughly where the tribes are. This is incredibly complex. <laughs> If you don't know it and you're a noob and you don't understand internet shit, right, this is this goes back fucking decades. Like the Tumblr v 4chan wars is a symptom of something that is like the, the, the culture wars, the Maggas versus Wokes is a symptom, is a, is a, is a, is a knock-on from Gamergate, which is a knock-on from Tumblr v 4chan, which is a knock-on from the blogging wars, which is a knock-on from like mummy wars, which is another knock-on. This is why mums net are fucking in on this shit, right? And it's a knock-on from like Usenet and IRC and all of these sort of old things, right? Um, yeah. 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 So DJ said, a truly open and free market is their utopia, but it doesn't exist. So they seem to think that we have an idealist, idealistic view of people, of humanity. It's like, nah, <laughs> people don't do that. All I can see right now, can I just say, I, the irony of the culture wars, right, is that 
The culture wars is living proof that capitalism doesn't work, right, without checks and balances. Because I'm trying to say, hey, capitalism, the free market's not working here, guys. You guys are just taking money and being grifters and you have an economic interest in making sure that nobody sees this perspective, right? which is that you're all making a fuck ton of money with your like um, influencer channels and your fucking blogs and your magazines and your fucking think tanks and all this shit, this IDW stuff that you're talking about, right? You're making money from that. When presented with evidence that undermines that, you choose to turn a blind eye too. That's why, cap un that's why you can't. That's why people, because people do that. Because <laughs> interests corrupt the ideas. Right, and it's not. I'm not. I'm not saying it's a conspiracy. I'm saying it's just this human nature. <laughs> and that's what Marx was right about: the need to survive and the need to live, and all of these things. Right, capitalism undermines your ability to do good work and do the right work. That's that's one of the tenets of like of of Marxism, is that is that Marxism liberates us from this shit. <laughs> anyway. I'm going to go. I hope yeah, do do shift. You know, I know my videos are long and they're hard to share, but I don't know how I can't I, I I don't have time. I can't do this stuff. I need I can only just get it out there. And all you can do is point people to it and say it exists and you should say it's important and it's like, well, it's important. Um if people are misdiagnosing wokeism, feel free to give them a link and say actually I think there's a different take on this. And then maybe someone might invite me and I might actually build some momentum and get some, you know, stuff happening. But I don't have a book. They just, you know, I don't have a dick. I don't have a book and I don't have a PhD. So I just talk to you. As long as I've got a handful of people that see things for what they are, we're fine. Anyway, I love you. We, well, we ha I think we have developed something better than capitalism or socialism, which is a mixture of the two and process. Social democracy largely works, largely works. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's not a lie. It's not, see, this is the thing. It's like, there's no, it's not either or there's no zero sum there, right? Keynesian economics works in some instances and, 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 you know, all of these things, it's, it's again, stop like philosophy is not zero sum. It's all of the ideas apply it. All of the indifference, like even right. Okay. Right now the puberty blockers case, right? I had this, this is a good example. What do you do with kids that are transitioned now? What do you do? Right? Now, if you're thinking with ideology, you're thinking, take them off completely. Right? Again, I, I, that's a very, like people, and there's an argument for that. There's an ideological argument for that, right? Because you're opposed to trans in kids. But what do you do if the kid is already on the train? Right? It's one thing, again, it's like, what do you do? It's the same thing, like I said, you could stop people joining stuff and it's harder to get people out and reverse your decision once they're in. And this is part of the problem with this discussion is that it starts to become extremely, because then there's other aspects like, well, some medicine is palliative. Some medicine, you know, like with morphine, you don't just give someone morphine, but if it's palliative, you give them all the fucking morphine they want right that's where other that's why you have to not just have one ideology one one school of thought it's not just socialism or capitalism or this or that or feminism or this or fucking it's we apply the right this is what this is why this has gone wrong is that we don't apply the right philosophy at the right time in the right circumstances because it fucking depends because people are messy and complicated <laughs> fucking depends <laughs> But you know, what do you do? Do you do you do you, do you now force a fourteen? I, I think it is actually an interesting question. It's a stupid. I think it's it's coming from an idiot, but I think it's an interesting question that we've got to address, right? What do you do with a kid who's been on hormones for five years? Do you force them to go on a fucking into puberty? I, I think that's hyperbolic, but at the same time, like the that's that's a very real problem that ideology is not going to fix. Ideology will not fix that because the harm's already been done. I think that's that's where it's you know we need to we need to just this is this is where ideology goes wrong. 
which is when you apply absolute thought. It's the same thing with gender critical. If you're fucking transphobic, I don't want to know you. Gender dysphoria is fucking real, right? You can have your opinion as to why that is, but there's still a person who's suffering and for whom transition does work and we need solutions and policy for that. Saying it shouldn't be this way or this is the reason it's this way, that's somewhat immaterial in a society. There's people who believe this, there's people who go through this, there's people who need support and help. And I think that that's where we need to get to is stop using – no school of thought applies 100% of the time. That's a cult. <laughs> anyway, and that was also Marx. Marx also pointed out problems with ideology in general, right? I think you maybe explore that. Again, people don't know their Marx. Marx had problems with ideology and turning things into ideologies. Anyway, I'm going to go. I love you. If you want to donate to me, go to my website. There's a donate button and shit. I think works. I also have mugs now <laughs> from Ian the other day. Fuck off, Ian, with a picture of a mushroom dick on it. <laughs> and I've got fuck off, Colin. So I'm just, I've decided I'm just going to like – add the name of anyone who annoys me or fucking of men's names and I'm just going to send them a link to buy a mug that just says their name on it. Fuck off, Colin. Fuck off, Paul. <laughs> it's like a funny form of like brigading. So if imagine having like 100 people like buy a mug that says fuck off Ian around it. That would be funny. It's funny punishment. Anyway, I love you. Thank you for your precious life seconds. I appreciate you hearing me out. I wish I had more time to write things down properly, but I just got to be realistic. I'm trying my best. Thank you. Have a great weekend and I'll talk to you on Monday and I will be talking about a somewhat niche part of this, but I'm going to start, I'll start diving into areas, uh, parts of this. Uh, but this part will be about how I think that where we should start to be more responsible for the tribes we build and the associations we keep and consciously building that, building those tribes. I'm doing that, right? I'm conscious, I'm conscious of putting in positive and negative reinforcement so that people like stay and watch and, and don't watch, right? Mansplaining magas can fuck off, right? Um, where's the cat? Bubble mug. I don't get it. Cat bubble. Oh, okay. Oh, ask me. I, I, I don't I don't understand. Um, yeah. The cat bubble mug. I don't understand. You talking about vibing cat? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'll just add merch. If you want something in particular, or you want something with your name on it, Philip. If you want me, if you want to fuck off, Philip mug. I'm more than willing <laughs> to make one. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm going to go. I love you. Oh, the, uh, the cunt, cunt bubble. Yes, I should. See, the problem is that I also, well, I, there was a couple of things with cunt on it. And um, then uh, someone reported, uh, what was it? Someone reported for JK Rowling stickers to Printful and to Redbubble. I think they were reporting because it's a drop, it's a it's a print on demand service. It's not. I'm not creating the merch. I'm. Uh, I just. I un. I got rid of them just in case they went after anyone for sort of hate speech. Because the my the ones that were like I identify my pronouns are fat cunt. I love that one, but um I I I, I removed that and a few others. Um, but I I'll I'll, I'll I'm going to be try and be smarter about things. Um. But yeah, the cunt bubble one's funny. But I actually, I actually want to do an illustration. <laughs> Visualize that one. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Actually, what I might do is actually produce the cunt bubble mug, and then you get a mug for being a patron as well. I'll just send it as a gift, maybe. Think about that, because I actually want to create um, that as that's the name of my club. <laughs> but we'll see how we go. Anyway, I'm gonna go. Thank you for your precious life seconds. I'll talk to you Monday. Uh, do share this stuff if you want. I'd really like it. I'd really just want my ideas out there so I get credit for it because what happens is like they, I just say stuff and then 
next minute they're going to start saying how fandoms started. It started in the fandoms and then I'm going to get fucking cut out of the conversation by dudes who take my ideas with and run with them on the right and in the United States and then they make it wrong. <laughs> they turn my ideas and make them wrong. <laughs> I'd really like to just expand on this myself and get uh, people can ask me questions my, like that. I can clarify. I don't think Judith Butler is to blame. I think, I think that it's just, it's going to happen. Farmer, right? Farmer are going to feed this shit because they want everything to be a social construct because they're in the doubt business. You want to sell people shit that's bad for them? Have them doubt things. Have them doubt the science. It's fucking, it's so clear when you see it. Anyway, I love you. I'm going to go. I, I, the thing is I can't do sound bites. Um, actually, I, I can do a couple of clips, sound bites. The problem is that the vast majority of my content um, doesn't work that way because I build on things and it becomes silly. And also I jump around and it becomes impossible to make one. I maybe should make some shorter videos that are scripted, but it's also then false advertising, right? It is also just a thing where people come expecting clips and then you end up with people who expect clips. And I don't, I don't have the time or capacity to edit. I can barely have time to stream. So um, um, I, I, it's kind of a pickle, which is that I sit there and I go, no, I'm not doing clips because then you end up attracting the clip bros and then you end up attracting shit. Part of the reason I hide, I actually don't get as much shit as I do is because I think my streams are long and no one watches to the end. Most of the shit's built in the middle <laughs> and the meat's there. And it's really just people who are sort of in for the long haul that really benefit. Um, but, yeah, I, might, I'll, I think I'd be better off. I'd rather just write things down um, and just write blog posts and stuff and rather than start pandering to people who want clips but I'll try. I'll try. It's just not really the way that I do things. Um, but yeah. Anyway, I love you. Thank you. Bye.